servers were in a period of downtime before Autodesk eventually, come on man, you're killing me, released the downloads for the 2019 stuff. I'm not doing any more videos on 2018 at this point, so close to the new versions coming out. So I thought I'd tell a story, mate, and this is a question that I get asked more and more frequently, and I've been asked it for years. <laughs> That's, where's the SolidWorks stuff at? Why don't you do any SolidWorks stuff? And it is a good question. It, it is, it's a good question because SolidWorks, whether you think it's better or not than Inventor, and people have got strong opinions on that, what's not arguing? is that SOLIDWORKS is a competitor to Inventor. It's, it's a choice between SOLIDWORKS and Inventor when either you're a student or when you're starting up a new business. Because whether you think one or the other is better than the other, it is a fact that they are in direct competition with each other. When they were both perpetual licenses, SOLIDWORKS was roughly the same price as Inventor. With Intolerance, they've got roughly the same feature set, they do the same thing, and they're aimed at the exact same market, the manufacturing market, and they're 3D parametric modelers they are in direct competition with each other, that's a fact. I've worked in an Autodesk reseller for many, many, many years, and we were up against SOLIDWORKS in many of the deals that we were trying to trying to close. It's a good question, why don't I look at SOLIDWORKS? And there's a good answer to it. It's a two-part answer, and I've alluded to half of the answer already in the title of the video, and that it's SOLIDWORKS' fault, and that's, that's true. Uh, but I've got mixed feelings on it, and I'll explain that in a little bit. But uh, I just thought I'd give that introduction just in case there's anyone out there who's not familiar with SOLIDWORKS. I would assume most people are at this point. SOLIDWORKS is more recognized as a brand than Inventor. I don't know why that is. Maybe it's because it's been around longer. The name is more recognizable. Maybe they've had TV commercials in the past which has made the name mainstream. I don't know. But SOLIDWORKS, the name is more affiliated with 3D the same way that AutoCAD is with 2D in the mainstream. So why don't I look at SOLIDWORKS? What's the deal with that then, mate? Right, the first part of the answer is pretty simple and straightforward, and that is I've never had any exposure to SOLIDWORKS at all throughout my entire work in Korea. And the reason for that is kind of circumstantial, kind of not really my fault, but it's just one of those things that's just panned out that way. So when I left school and got a job, it was using AutoCAD in an engineering company, and this was before the 3D, it was, I think it might have even been before SOLIDWORKS became mainstream but it was just 2D at the time. So I was on AutoCAD for about four or five years, and then I left that company to join an Autodesk reseller. An Autodesk reseller, and I'm gonna use a car analogy because it's pretty similar. Autodesk and SolidWorks are competitors. Like for example, a BMW 3 Series is a competitor to a Mercedes C-Class. Same kind of car, same kind of price, aimed at the same kind of person, but the cars have got their own pros and cons. So it's actually a pretty good analogy. So an Autodesk reseller, which is where I joined, is like a car dealership. It's like a car franchise. Car franchise, a dealership, is not owned by BMW, for example. They license out the franchise to the dealership, and then the dealership have got their own profit and loss. They buy the cars from BMW and sell them for a profit. And in the same way that that franchise can only talk about BMW and sell BMW cars, an Autodesk reseller is like an Autodesk franchise. They only sell Autodesk products. They only train Autodesk products. They might decide to specialize in a few other bits and pieces, but generally back in the day, most Autodesk resellers were just Autodesk specialized and focused, and that was it. And that was the case for me. So when I was in the Autodesk reseller, I only worked with trained, supported, and had any interaction with Autodesk software, mostly Inventor and Vault. I was going out and doing loads and loads and loads of demonstrations on Inventor, doing pre-sales product presentations with a projector, you know, in the sales when you go out and you blah, blah, blah in the boardroom to try and sell Inventor. And we were always up against SOLIDWORKS. SOLIDWORKS were either in before us or coming in afterwards to try and swipe the deal or, you know, was, that, that's where the competition aspect came into it. But I never had the chance, nor the time, nor the opportunity to actually get SOLIDWORKS, look at it, test it out and see what it was all about. And the entirety of my working day, I was expected to just specialize in Autodesk stuff. And that was 10 years of that pretty much. After the 10 years, when I left the, the reseller channel, I moved into a I moved into the real world, into, into industry. And because of the 10 years that I had working in the reseller, that extensive experience in working with Inventor and Vault got me a job working in a customer site who were an Autodesk customer. And typically, uh, this sounds a little bit patronized, and I'm sorry, sorry about it, but in the real world, a customer tends to work with just one supplier's tools. It's very rare that you'll get a company that internally will use Inventor and SolidWorks, for example. It's very rare. It can happen, but it's very rare. A site tends to be an Autodesk site or a SolidWorks site or a Pro Engineer site, and then that's that's what they stick with. It it's difficult to swap platforms. Very very difficult. Even though the company will say, oh, you know, the the tools are all the same. You know, skills are transferable. They are to a certain extent, but there's still a big learning curve. So it's not normal to have different 3D tools in one site. 
and the sites that I worked in were Autodesk sites. So there, were, there, there have been times where we've taken in a SolidWorks license for a, a customer's job because a certain product was expected to be delivered in a certain format. That can happen. Up until now, I just haven't had that in that exposure to and that knowledge of SolidWorks to be able to do any tutorials on it because I don't know it. Up until recently, I'd never even installed, let alone opened and used SolidWorks. So I'm not in a position to be doing tutorials on it. I kind of hold my tutorials to a high regard. It's my, it's kind of my thing. It's my differentiator. I want them to be the best quality tutorials on the internet. And I can't do that if I'm doing a tutorial on something I've never actually used in, in Anger. So that's the first reason why. I just don't have SolidWorks. But then that leads me into point two. And point two is the story about how it's SolidWorks fault, which is a direct follow on from I'd never had SolidWorks. That's their fault. About two years ago, the YouTube channel, TFI, was getting a bit stagnant. I was a bit demoralized with the growth of the channel and I thought, right, there's only so many people that use Inventor, therefore my channel can't grow as fast as I want it to because I'm pitching everything towards a very small target audience and I'm limiting that to just Inventor users. So I should probably diversify in some way. So I thought to myself, what if I was to do performance testing on the likes of SolidWorks, on Pro Engineer, on Fusion 360, on all these other CAD packages that people use, I might not be able to do tutorials on them but I know enough about CAD. I'm tech savvy enough to be able to open up the applications and figure them out enough to do performance testing. I'm quite good with that kind of stuff. But in order to do that with SolidWorks, I needed a trial copy of SolidWorks. And before anyone mentions it, I can't use a dodgy downloaded pirated torrented version of software on my YouTube channel. I can, it's just too risky. If I was ever audited, I would get destroyed. So I can't, I can't do that, I can't risk it. So I thought, to see whether or not this is worth pursuing further, I'll get a trial of SolidWorks and then I'll do as much as I can on the trial to see if it's worth pursuing. So knowing how Autodesk work and knowing how most other software vendors that I've approached and dealt with work, normally you would go to the website of that company, you would punch in your name, your email address, and then they'd give you the download of the files for a trial for 30 days that you can install freely, do what you want with, and then after 30 days, if you don't buy it, the software just times out and dies. That's normally how it goes. And that's kind of what I expected from SolidWorks, but no, no such luck, no such luck. Uh, and the reason why all these other vendors do that is because they know the software's the software itself isn't worth a penny, got no value at all. The value is in the license key or the dongle or the, the subscription account that you buy. The software itself is worthless. It's out of date really quickly. Autodesk give you, give you the files freely without hesitation in a heartbeat. So I went over to SolidWorks website thinking I'll get a trial in the same way as you get it off Autodesk's website. Oh, was that naive? <laughs> was that naive? You get presented on SolidWorks website with the most ridiculous questionnaire that I've ever come across. I mean, it's a slight exaggeration, but it felt like I was being asked my date of birth, my shoe size, asked for a slither of DNA, <laughs> I mean, a sample of blood. <laughs> so why are you asking me all this? It's ridiculous. It was a huge questionnaire. After hit and go, I expected a, a download to start, but no. My details were then whooshed off to the local reseller where they would be in touch with me promptly. I was like, oh, I don't want to speak to your reseller, man. I just wanted a trial. I don't want to waste anyone's time. I'm not going to buy it. But that happened. I'd had no choice in the matter. That happened. So then a couple of days later, the uh, the reseller rang me up. Because I've been in that person's shoes before, I said to the guy straight off the bat, look mate, I'm, I'm not a sales lead. I know you've been forwarded my details as a potential sales prospect. I'm not. I'm just, tr I'm just trying to get a trial. I didn't want to speak to you. I didn't want to have to consume any of your time. I just wanted to get a download of the Solid SolidWorks website. Is there any chance you can just, now that you're here, can you just get me a trial? And he said no. He flat out just immediately said no. And his reason for saying no was that me getting a trial was a downstream step of the SolidWorks sales process. And I stopped and I thought, what? What? Hang on a minute. So in order for me to test the software, I have to have instigated the process to buy it. That doesn't sound right that sounds like I, I can't look at a car unless I've I've made a commitment to to buy it or I've made a, a some kind of commitment to promise to buy it or something are, are, you, are you kidding me <laughs> that's that's nonsense absolute nonsense at the time it felt like this guy was just fobbing me off he couldn't be bothered to open up his email client to send me a hyperlink because I'd told him that I'm not going to buy anything from him he's not going to personally get anything from me it's not worth his time to bother with me 
to send me a trial when I didn't want to use his time in the first place but he just thought sod you you're not worth my time go away and he used that as an excuse but actually no no going over to SolidWorks' website I only found this out the other day this is the official SolidWorks blog and the hypocrisy and irony in this is is quite unbelievable well we'll, we'll have a t we'll take a read through this because this is something this is something quite unbelievable before we get started right if you're thinking well hang on a minute who who are you who are you to talk about and to criticize solid just before we get started on all this because i'm going to get quite critical of them who are you to criticize the the business practices of solidworks and how they sell licenses well i worked in an autodesk reseller for 10 years as we've discussed so i know how the the, the customer slash uh, supplier interaction works and i'm cad manager for two massive engineering companies so i'm pretty well qualified to talk about and criticize this stuff mate very very well qualified Okay, so let's get cracking on this. If there's one thing that I think... Every, who's writing this? I think this is an official... This is an official SolidWorks blog. Robert Bernardo, Ben, ben him. I assume this is coming from SolidWorks because it's their official blog. If there's one thing that I think everyone would agree with, it's that we all like to try products before we buy them. Totally agree with you there, mate. At SolidWorks, we understand how important cost can be when determining which CAD software best fits your needs before purchasing a commercial license. Okay, so wouldn't it be great if you were able to evaluate a new CAD tool before purchasing? Yes, mate, that would be great. Well, you're in luck. I actually wasn't in luck. <laughs> I was cock-blocked. SolidWorks provides the opportunity to evaluate SolidWorks software by offering free product trials. It's not actually free. Even though no money's transferred, it's not actually free. But we'll get to that in a second. Requesting a trial is easy. It wasn't easy, mate. It was not easy. Nothing about your process to get a trial was easy. Just fill out the SolidWorks trial request form, which uh, consumes about a half hour of your time. And our sales department will make sure your information is forwarded to an authorized SolidWorks value-added reseller. There's where your problem is, mate. Requesting a trial is easy. But we're going to forward all of your information on to the reseller before we actually give you a trial, which makes it not easy. This is because SolidWorks doesn't sell products directly. And all training and support is provided by our resellers. Some of you may be rolling your eyes at the thought of having a reseller contact due to bad experience with resellers for other vendors. No, mate. I had a bad experience with your reseller. The irony there is unreal. All right, the SolidWorks experience is different. It's really not. Not only are all of our resellers SolidWorks certified, but also provide the highest level of service and support so you can feel confident and positive about your experience. When a reseller contacts you, they will talk to you about your business need. Right, this is where everything goes all to shit. They will, con they will talk to you about your business, your needs, your plans for the future. When you're ready, they will put together a proposal for you and schedule a demo in your office. And when that's done, they'll leave you with a trial version of SolidWorks that you can use with your own designs and files. That immediately makes this not free. Because the moment that I have to get on the phone to you lot, talk about it, tell you a story, bring you guys in, schedule a meeting for two hours. That's two hours of my time. That's two hours of the team who are tied up in a meeting just to get a trial. That's not free. People's time is money. So no, it's not free. And then the inevitable, after all this is done and you guys have left the building, the inevitable bombardment of phone calls from salespeople. Have you made a decision yet? What have I got to do to close the deal? Have you made a decision? Have you got the director's approval yet? Is there anything more I can do? How do you think about this? What do you think about the proposal? Ring, 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 ring. All, every day until I make a decision. Everything that I really don't need. And that makes SolidWorks not different to anybody else, I'm afraid. Sorry to burst your bubble. I know this This uh, article is pretty old, right? This is from back in 2013. But I tried to get a trial roughly 15, 16 months ago, roughly. So it hasn't changed too much. So in order to get a trial, you have to bring in the SolidWorks technical team who will give you a demo, consume your time, and then give you a trial. And by that point, you are firmly within their tentacles of trying to get a sale out of you. And I can kind of see why they do this. I can see why they do this. They could make the argument, right? I know I'm waffling here, but it is story time. They could make the argument that we don't want to give somebody a trial of SolidWorks, leave it with them, not have any contact with them, they then install it, install it wrong, set it up wrong, can't use it, and then blame the software for being bad and poor when all along it was a lack of training or a lack of guidance that caused them to not get used to the software and that hurts us because 
there's now a bad story out there from someone saying, oh, it was rubbish to set up. Vault's got quite a history with this. People setting it up wrong and then blaming Vault for being bad. But that's a potential thing to happen. I get that. But you should be appreciative of the fact that there's people like myself and other high-level CAD managers out there who are way beyond that. Way beyond that. When a CAD manager gets in touch with you and says, I want to trial your software, you, th there's a high chance that this person is pretty educated on installing software and getting their head around it. So there needs to be an opportunity for us to do that. The fact that I have to deal with a sales member and have to bring a team in for a demonstration immediately deters me from, from doing this. And it actually stopped me from doing it because I wasn't allowed a trial. This is the reason why I was denied a trial of SolidWorks because I openly said I'm not going to buy it. Now you could argue, you could argue this is all subjective, arguably arrogant and egotistical. I didn't mention my YouTube name. I didn't mention the channel's name. At the time, the channel the channel is still small. It's going to make no, no bones about it. But I did say, look, it's being asked for. All I want is a trial because I want to create YouTube videos about SolidWorks performance testing. It's to promote SolidWorks in some way, shape or form. Didn't mention the YouTube name. I didn't mention my name, but it didn't make any difference. The guy couldn't really see past making a sale and not making a sale. It was just a case of, I don't care what you're saying. Doesn't matter what the downstream benefits potentially could be for, for us. You're not getting one. You're not getting one. Uh, so yeah, uh, unfortunately, product trials are only available for commercial customers. So if you're a student, you won't be able to take advantage of this offer. But that doesn't mean we're not thinking about you. <laughs> we're still thinking about making money of you still. If you're currently attending a secondary school or university, you're eligible to, bu to buy. You don't get free student. Okay. Uh, a one-year license of SolidWorks Student Edition at the fraction of a commercial license. Uh, it includes everything you would get in SolidWorks Premium, blah, 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 yakety schmackety. That's another reason why I haven't done any SOLIDWORKS content, I did try. I tried to get a trial for the channel and SOLIDWORKS said no. And after this reseller said no, I kind of just gave up at that point. I thought, I, I don't need this, right? I, I don't need to have SOLIDWORKS content on my channel and SOLIDWORKS doesn't need me. They're doing just fine. They, they, <laughs> they're they they not losing out here at all. But we could have had a pretty decent relationship. We could have had a, a, a good relationship between me and the reseller that got in touch with me, who I'm not going to name because technically they didn't do anything wrong. The salesman was a bit archaic, a bit short-sighted by not looking at it as a good opportunity. It could have been a good opportunity for the both of us. It's small time. It could. You never know. You never know what could have happened from that. But I was denied the trial. SolidWorks just didn't happen at that point. Didn't give me a trial because I said I wasn't going to buy it. I thought I was being quite decent and being open and honest. I didn't pretend to be a sales lead. Openly said to the guy, I'm not going to buy it. So all I want is a copy of the the, the files I know they're worthless I know you don't even host them but I just wanted the files and they said no I assume that this is SolidWorks's policy globally it's on their website and this is something that they do on a regular basis I'm quite shocked at that actually after seeing this I'm used to the way Autodesk do it and that's just to give anyone a trial in a heartbeat but SolidWorks is obviously a little bit different I understand the reasons for doing this but it's uh, it's a little bit curious and it's a uh, don't get me wrong they're doing just fine so any criticism I level at this is kind of meaningless because they're doing just fine. It's just a, it's just a very archaic, old school way of approaching things. But never mind. That's it. That's why I don't use SolidWorks. I can't get a trial. Thank you for the offer, but I don't want a downloaded pirated copy sent over to me, if you don't mind. The only reason and the only way I'd ever put SolidWorks content on the channel is if SolidWorks were to reach out and say, hey, Here's a, here's a license or here's a trial or whatever. And I, I can't use downloaded hooky dodgy licenses. Okay, I think I'll uh, I'll wrap it on the head there, mate. That's, that's the reason why I don't use SolidWorks. It might change in the future. It depends entirely on whether or not they want to work with me or not. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, but thank you very much. I'll see you in the next one. Toodles.